All right, hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, by now you've probably gone through some of my chemistry videos, some of my nature videos, some of my physics videos, but, but today, photography? Maybe go through some photography, yes? Yeah, so I'm gonna do something kind of fun today. Uh, go through my bag and kind of look at every lens that I have, uh, save one, one I lent to a friend, so it's not here right now, um, but these I've accumulated uh, over, over the years, some were given, some I bought. Um, so yeah, it's like a mini collection here and we'll see what each one does and what the perspective is like. Hopefully that'll be helpful for you when trying to frame the perfect shot. Okay, and the subject for the indoor photos here, we're doing indoor photos. Um, is this baseball? It's like a normal little league baseball. Okay, I have it on this little box on the stand here. It's inside the garage. No other lights around, we're not using a flash. A little bit of outdoor light. So it's nice, very natural, but not a lot of light. Two photos will be taken with each lens. The first one about a meter away, standing maybe like right there by the lawnmower. Uh, and the second one will be about two meters away. That's about six feet away, kind of right there by the corner of the car. And the camera, as always, is my Canon EOS 5D Mark II. Professional grade camera, but again, pretty old, uh, but still pretty high quality. The settings will be AV aperture priority set at F4. ISO will be 800 for all the photos. F4, ISO 800, and the camera will adjust the shutter speed accordingly. And being that it's indoors, it'll be a little slower, but all around 190th or 100th, right around there. Okay, and then for the lenses that I'm using, um, if you want a specific description or a little close up on each lens, check out my other video with the outdoor photos. In the description, uh, there I kind of go over each lens and highlight a few things about that, but I'm gonna skip over that for now. Okay, so let's get to the photos, starting with the shortest focal length, 14 millimeters, and standing just one meter away from that baseball. All right, so here you can see it's a very wide angle lens, and the, the center looks fine, Right, like right in the middle where the baseball is, like that looks fine, but with wide angle lenses, the edges are weird, right? Look at that garage door opener at the top. It's like a weird shape and look at the door. It's like all elongated, right? So wide angle lens, um, yeah, you, you really see a lot of the background, um, but it really distorts the edges. Okay, 35 millimeters now. And a lot of people say this is great for street photography. Like you don't know uh, what you're gonna get. So you need um, a little bit of the background to be seen, uh, but you also wanna see the subject and nice and easy. You don't have to stand that close, stand that far. So here I'm standing about three feet away, right? Which is pretty close. You probably won't get that close to a person, uh, but maybe still life, like your food, right? Or taking a picture uh, of some flower or something like that. Um, it's great for that, but I actually think here, 45 millimeter is better for street photography. Some people say this is closer to the focal length of like, of like what your eye is and kind of like the natural sight, right? So when you're looking, uh, you're standing about a step back from something, you're looking at it, the background is a little blurred. You see a little bit of the background, uh, but mainly you're focused on your subject, right? All right, so moving up to 70 millimeters now, Okay, so of course, zoomed in even closer, you don't see much background. Um, and right there in the center, that's kind of what you're focusing on the baseball. It looks fine. It's not distorted, right? So you probably use this for a portrait. Um, but here's the 85. Many people say 85 millimeter is actually the best for a portrait. And I would have to agree with that. However, you would not come this close, right? Three feet away with this huge lens right in their face, right? And you'll probably also see the wrinkles and the pimples and the makeup, right? So that's a little bit too close. Um, but here we have the 100. And this is a macro lens, 100 millimeters. And you would get that close because the point of a macro lens is you want to see the detail, right? Look, look at the stitching. Look at the faded lettering of where it, like the baseball has been hit a lot, right? You can really see a lot of the fine detail. Um, and that's what the macro lens is for. Um, when you get that close, it's really a beautiful thing, right? Looking at insects wings or maybe like a gem or something like that. Okay, now moving on to the next set of photos, I'm two meters back. So I took a few steps back, basically about six and a half feet away from that baseball now. And here we're starting with the shortest focal length again, 14 millimeters. Um, and again, you can see the center 
looks normal and I look pretty far away, right? Even though it's only about six feet away. Um, but with this wide angle lens, you see everything in the background, right? So some people use this for uh, house photography or like real estate agents. Like you want to make the room look huge, right? Look at this garage. Like you can see in the back, the bike and the cooler and the door, like they look so far away, but they're not. They're actually like right there. Okay. So that's when you would use this wide angle lens right? Um, like you tr really want to show in the background, like you're on vacation and you want to show, you know, all the trees in the background, something like that. Okay. And now the 35 millimeter and the 45 millimeter, uh, which I said are good for just like everyday photography. Um, I don't know what I'll get. So, right. I can see some of the background. It's kind of like what I would see if I were just standing right there, right? I'm about six feet away. Um, everything's nice and clear. I don't see much distortion on the edges. Things don't look like weirdly proportioned, right? So it's very like your natural view. Okay, and now for the 70 millimeter and the 85 millimeter, uh, like I said, you would use these for portraits. I'm standing about six feet away, right? So that's kind of where you would stand taking someone's headshot, right? Something like that. And it just focuses on that face, right? So pretend that baseball is that face, maybe the eyes or the nose of somebody, right? You do see the detail and it looks nice and round. It's not weirdly proportioned um, or distorted or anything like that. The background, I don't really care. So the background, I don't see much and it's kind of nice and blurred, right? So 70, especially the 85 millimeter, I really recommend for portraits, specifically headshots. Okay, now finally the 100 millimeter. Again, this is a macro lens, so I wouldn't use it for portraits, but I, but I guess you could if the lighting's good. Uh, this one only goes to f 2.8, whereas my other portrait lenses, they go to like 1.8, right? So much better for softness and like background blur. For this one, I guess if the lighting's good, like in the outdoor video, then you could use it for portraits. Um, this is what you would see. All right, great. So I hope that was helpful for you, especially if you're a beginner learning photography and the different focal lengths. Like, what's the point? Why Why have the different focal lengths? Why don't I just move around, right? Um, I hope you got to see with those different perspectives what you can get when trying to frame the best shot. And check out my other videos. Um, and if you like them or if you have a question, please leave a comment. Thank you very much. And take care. Happy shooting out there.